Hey guys, um, I hope you're doing well today. Um, today's sermon is called Distress Signal. Um, it came about um, when I was thinking about um, people who are struggling, but they don't bother to um, tell anyone they struggle in private and whatever. Um, they struggle in private and they struggle alone and they just, they just struggle, they, they struggle but they smile and, and that's good in a way but, but that's bad in a way. It's good because, um, to struck to be under an attack or to have a struggle and be smiling uh, shows that you have um, tenacity and the ability to persist under hard times but it becomes back it becomes concerning when the weight of said struggle or circumstance is crushing you and you're not telling anyone. Thinking this week about um, someone I someone I've heard about. I won't mention any names here, but um, they were um, they were they're a world renowned leader, and they were re recently. Uh, caught in a uh, compromising situation and the whole the whole thing just blew up um, uh, early this year or late last year and I was thinking of this person and I was like I, I wonder if he sent out a distress signal if he calls for help or you know if he if he uh, just said I need help I can't handle this now I don't know the ins and outs of the situation and I will not, not presume to do so but I was like I said to myself with all and I said, isn't it interesting with all the um, people that this person knows, with all the influence that this person has, um, that um, I wondered if he called for a distress signal. And I was thinking of not only this person, but I was thinking of other leaders that, that, um, really have caught themselves in in uh, compromising situations and then it all blows up in their face and, um, uh, and the reason why I think this is is because the church um, historically has not created a space where leaders can come and say, look, I'm struggling uh, with lust, I'm struggling with uh, money management, I'm thinking of, you know, um, I'm thinking of uh, committing suicide or I'm thinking of quitting. We haven't created a space for our leaders to first of all be human and to second of all just be people and I think that that has to change and I love this age now of transparent leaders but what we still need to work on is just saying hey we understand that you're human and that you go through the same stuff that I do. You have the same insecurities, you have the same um, 
You have the same propensities, same proclivities, same family issues, same everything that I do, but you're just called of God, and I, I think um, everybody's called of God, but you're just called of God to preach. Um, but being a preacher doesn't mean that you're a good, good wife or good husband or good sister or you've got everything together. I think, I think we've got it confused um, that because you're you're a gifted preacher or a gifted speaker, you're supposed to have it all together. And I think. Sometimes that is why they don't uh, send out distress signals and, and they don't, um, influential leaders um, typically don't, they struggle by themselves. And that is very dangerous when you struggle by yourself because you only can hear yourself. When you bring someone else, um, someone trusted, um, that person could shed light on the circumstance and make it less heavy. When you're struggling with something alone, it can get, it does get extremely heavy. And I think sometimes the weight of influence can get extremely heavy. Like we see, we see these preachers, um, and we're like, "Oh, I want that," but we don't understand the weight of everything. And the weight of everything, um, if not managed properly, if not put the prop, if um, the proper, the proper, um, the proper, uh, things aren't put in place, um, it'll crush you. The weight, the weight of success is more crushing than sometimes the weight of failure. Because the thing with failure, uh, quote unquote failure, failure is you can you, you you can fail and then pick yourself up and start again but success um you kind of feel like you have to top that and top that and top that and and for everything else you do well the world has expectations of you that because you do this well, you have to do that well. And sometimes it's very crushing and very lonely. And sometimes you see the pastors of um, these big churches and think, wow, they have everything. And they have a wife, they have a family, thriving ministry, all of that. But what we don't realize is they um, they also, it's a lot of pressure. And I'm telling you, it's a lot of loneliness at the top. So what we need to uh, pray for when we see them is just, that um, that the loneliness and the pressure doesn't crush them, and for us, for us who are not at the top, that was for preachers who are uh, or people of influence. Uh, but for us who are not at the top, um, even by the world standards. Uh, you might be a mom uh, who seems to have everything together. You might be a dad who seems to have everything together. You, you might 
might be a business woman who seemed to have everything together. But um, the Lord's saying, you don't have to do this alone. He's saying, send out a distress signal. You don't have to pretend everything's okay when it isn't. It's okay to send out a distress signal, to send out a, I need help. And too many people are struggling alone and I'm um, all, like, I'm not talking about the homeless people that are struggling physically. Anyway, that's one kind of struggle. But I'm talking about the people that you see that you wouldn't know are struggling with suicide, that you wouldn't know are struggling with all of this, because they feel they have no one to turn to. The Lord is saying today, send out a distress signal, say help, and be honest about where you are. Be honest, be forthright about where you are, because that's the only um, time someone can help you, is if you're honest and forthright about where you are and where you're struggling with. First of all, you need to be honest and forthright with God. A lot, okay, a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but some people, um, they have this view of God that he's up there. If if we pr praise him on Sunday, we praise you, Lord, and, or if we have our worship time, in the morning and night, God just leaves us. But he never leaves you. He He sees you at every hour every of the day, every minute of the day, every second of the day. And he wants you to know that when you're in distress, he wants you to lean on him. And you don't have to do it on your own. And you don't have to pray all pretty prayers, you need to be honest with God. You need to be, say, Lord, you need to just tell him what's going on in your heart. And and what, what prayer does, what talking to God does, is give him um, uh, access to step in. Like, he has permission, but he, but he won't violate you and just step in unless you ask. You need to be honest about where you are. You need to say, God, I'm struggling. God, I'm really just, it's just really hard for me. I can't do this. Um... You just need to be honest and go go to the places where you think he doesn't want you to go. Expose all those uh, nasty, dark places that you think he doesn't want you to go. Because he wants to heal those places today, not tomorrow, not next week. He wants you to heal those places today and he he loves you so much beloved that he just wants you to say you, you to know I'm gonna do something weird he's calling me to do something weird right in the middle of the sermon he's saying when you're down and troubled, and you need a helping hand, cause nothing, oh nothing, is going right, hold your eyes, 
and think of me. And soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest nights. Oh, you just call out my name and you know wherever I am I'll come running just to see you again winter, spring, summer, or fall all you've got to do is call and I'll be there, yes I will. You got a friend if the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds, and that old north wind begins to blow. Put your hands together and call, and call, and call my name out and soon I'll be knocking upon your door. Oh, you just call. Up my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running just to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call. And I'll be there, yes I will. You've got a friend. Ain't it good to know that you've got a friend when people can be so cold. They'll hurt you and desert you. They'll take your soul if you let them. But I won't let them if you just call out my name and you know wherever I am I'll come running just to see you again winter spring Summer or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there, yes I will. You've got a friend, and it good to know you got a friend. Yes, it's good to know you got a friend. And your father says you've got a friend. It's just amazing when I think of that. It's weird. I don't usually sing in the middle of the sermon. I usually wait till after when I'm signing off. But um, the Lord really wanted me to say uh, through James Taylor and Karen, or Carol King, depending on what version you listen to, um, that you've got a friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he's ready to offer help. You need to send a, a distress signal. The second point is you need to send up a distress signal to yourself. A lot of, um, sometimes you're struggling, but you don't even know you're struggling. You're on autopilot, and you don't even know you're tired. You don't even know you're stressed. You don't even know you're about to fall. You don't even know that 
something is going on. Sometimes you, there are two things. Sometimes you do know when you choose to ignore it, but sometimes you don't know. But it's but the stress or the struggle is still there, and if you do know and you're ignoring it, the Lord is saying today. Confront it. Don't ignore it. Confront it. You can deal with it. He'll help you deal with it. He'll send somebody to help you deal with it. And if you're, if you're, um, if you're in distress and you don't know it, then you've, then you've got to just. Pay attention to your body. Are you feeling more tired than usual? Are you yelling at your kids more than usual? Are you working more than usual? Or are you taking stuff home from work? Are you taking stuff personally that you wouldn't normally um, take personally? Are you having um, physical manifestations for no reason like stomach cramps and or feeling sick or just feeling just run down Th that uh, those all could be signs of a of a um those physiological signs could be signs of a spiritual problem because sometimes when God can't get your attention through your spirit, he uses your body to say, you know what, you're in distress. And you may not know that you're in distress, but these physiological signs um, are, are saying that, yes, you're in distress and you need to, um, you need to pay attention to that. Because if you don't, your, your body will sometimes speak for you. And when your body speaks for you, it'll speak uh, loudly. Um, like John Gray said one time, he said, um, it, sometimes the Lord will make you lay down. <laughs> and he said, sometimes the pastors won't be so green uh, when he makes you lay down. So pay attention to the signs of your body, even if it's like, um, even if it's like a small thing, but it keeps persisting and you just think, oh, I'm just tired. That could be a spiritual sign that something is wrong. It could be a physical sign too, predominantly physical. But it can be a spiritual sign that there is something in your body that you're not paying attention. There is some, there is something in your body you're not paying attention to, but it's a deeper symptom that something is wrong in your soul, something is wrong in your spirit, something is wrong in your spiritual life. And you need to... Um, pay attention to that because the Lord loves you too much to see you just um, to see you in distress and to just leave you there um, although he will not invade your space as I said he will give you signs either um, in your body or in your emotions that, hey, something is triggering me here, something is wrong here, I need to address this. A lot of people are spiritual, are um, spiritually sick, and they're, and it's showing up with physical symptoms. So, you might have some physical symptoms thinking it's COVID, you get your COVID test back, it's negative, but you're still feeling those physical symptoms. 
and you go to the doctor, the doctor says nothing is wrong and whatever. Um, the Lord's saying it might be your 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 body's um, flare up in your physical health might be a indication that your soul is sick and you need to deal with that soul sickness or you need to deal with that spiritual sickness. You're in distress and you need to send them a flare for help. You need to say, help, I need help. And um, that goes to my last point. You, you need to send up a flare to God. You need to send up a flare to yourself. And you need to send up a flare to others. Um, you need to reach out and say, help, I'm feeling, I'm feeling stressed. I, I need help with the kids or I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling emotionally drained. You don't need, you don't need to tell everybody, but you need somebody to tell. I'm feeling emotionally drained. I'm feeling just, just like I can't do it anymore. You need a trusted friend that you can just lay yourself bare with. And so, and most times, it's a few trusted friends that you um, need to lay yourself, uh, that you uh, need to lay yourself there, there with. You're not alone with whatever you're going through, you're not alone. And here's one thing too, um, you don't need to lay yourself there with everybody. You need to be vulnerable, but be selective with who you're vulnerable with. Um, uh, a lot of the times people are vulnerable, but they're vulnerable um, to everyone. Like they put all their business on Facebook. Not everyone needs to know your business, especially on Facebook. What you need is a few trusted friends that you can say, hey, this is just, I'm just totally um, feeling like this. And you just, you just need that. We all need each other. And another thing I was saying to a few weeks ago, I said, um, I talked about speaking things out loud. And I was, I was thinking about that last night too. The reason why we struggle, the reason why we, you see men and women having affairs or um, de uh, dealing with addictions is because they struggle in silence. They don't speak what they're feeling because they're thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't be feeling this way, let's bury it. But if you bury it, it, it doesn't get dealt with it. In fact, if you bury what you're feeling, what you're thinking, it comes to, to light. Uh, no, if you bury what you're feeling or what you're thinking, it doesn't come to light. And, and when darkness surrounds something, it gets larger and larger and larger. But when you bring light to something, when you speak about something to to a um, to a person or even to yourself, it brings clarity and it brings light and it brings uh, life to that thing. And whatever you're feeling, right or wrong. Um, whatever it is, speak it out loud. Go to the place where you're afraid to go. Go to the thing that you've been ignoring. Play it out in your mind. Speak it out in your mind. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, 
go there. And that's what the Lord's been teaching me. Don't bury it and pretend like it doesn't exist. Speak it out, even if it's to yourself. Like, let it run its course through your mind. And, you, and you'll see such freedom with it. So instead of when you see a woman just, uh, if you're a man, and, and you see a woman, and you're just lusting after her, instead of just tapping it down and saying, no, let's not do it, talk it through. Talk it through with the Lord. Um, talk it through. What are you... Uh, what are you lusting about? Like, talk it through. Give it a voice. Because when you give something a voice, it loses its power. And things gain power when they don't have a voice. And so give give that thing a voice. Uh, let, let your mind take you there. Like, don't be afraid of um, feelings or emotions. We can't be ruled by our feelings or our, our emotions, but we need to acknowledge them. We need to say, yes, I'm... We could say, yes, I'm single and I so want to have sex right now. Or, or... I'm dealing with an addiction and they totally want to pop a pill right now. Or yes, I I want to uh I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm lonely or I'm bored so I wanna eat right now. Talk your way through it, even if it's to yourself. Like go there in mind say um Say, you know, say what you're feeling and don't be afraid to go there. Like, the the battleground is the mind, but to loosen the chains, the, to loosen the chain, chains, you, you have to speak it out. And don't be afraid to go to that dark place and, and really play it out in your mind. When, in my experience, to play stuff out in your mind and to speak it out loud. Don't, don't just play it out in your mind and do it soft, softly. No, speak it out loud. Um, what the Lord did with me a few uh, weeks ago, not weeks ago, but a few years ago, when I was struggling with, with, like lust and he said he said okay um what about this is turning you on right now what about this is getting getting you right now and he made me speak it out he made me go there in his in my mind he made me just talk it out and he said Talking it out, feeling it is not a sin. Is not a sin. It's acting on it. And when you talk it out, when you talk whatever out, it gives it less power. See, the the problem with the church is we've been silent on so many things for so long. And people have been struggling in secret with all kinds of things that they refuse to give a voice. The, the devil's running rampant because of our silence. And our minds are a battleground. But we need to um, break the chains by breaking the silence. Um, the reason why the civil rights movement was so powerful is that um, the whoever was a part of it um, broke the silence? Um, the the reason why the uh, LGBTQ uh, movement was so powerful.
powerful. Um, that is because they broke the silence. They said no more will be stay silent, and that and that happens with every movement, except the church. We've stayed silent on so many demons that are little, literally running around the church. But I'm coming for them today. I'm saying break the silence and you break the chain. When you break the silence, you break the chain. And um, I, I was thinking of um, David. Um, David, the psalmist, and David, the king, uh, starting from the end of Ruth, going to First and Second Samuel, um, you you hear the story of David. When David was anointed king, um, he didn't have anyone to teach him how to be a king. He knew how to kill a lion and a bear, and he knew how to kill Goliath, but he didn't know how to operate as king. So, not really, there was no like mentor to teach him that. So, I believe that's why he got in trouble, because I believe his lust was always there from the time he got anointed by Jesse to the time he was in Saul's court playing for him as a musician to the to the t to the time before that when he was with Goliath. I believe that lust thing with Bash Bath Sheba was always there, but he didn't send up a distress signal and say, I need help with this with this uh, lust thing and this woman thing. And sometimes what you, no, most times what you hide from eventually catches up with you. What you struggle with, if you don't deal with it in the dark, it comes to, to light in the most harmful way. And I think that's what happened with David and Bathsheba. The last thing was always there. He just didn't automatically start lusting. It was always there, but I believe he didn't deal with it until... Uh, Jonathan called him on it and, and told a story and confronted him on it. And here's another thing too. If you are called by God to someone's life and you see them going wrong, lovingly confront them about it. Not, not in a judgmental way. Not in a way you're going to hell, but just lovingly and with God's guidance, confront them on it. Because sometimes we see our fr our friends of heaven going wrong and we say nothing. And when we say nothing, we're, we're just totally um, an accomplice until that person destroys themselves. On the other hand, some of us go around like the police correcting everyone, um, like pointing out everyone's wrong behavior. And that's wrong too, because we are not, we are not the person, the Holy Spirit. We are not God. We are not called to everyone's life. Only if you are called to speak into that person's life do you have the right to, to talk to them, to be with them, to, 
to speak into the, that person's life and to uh, bring correction. Because open correction is better than secret love, but um, you need to be careful how you're correcting people and you need to have God's guidance. And the first thing with correction is relationship. If you don't have a relationship with that particular person, you can pray for them, you can seek the Lord on their behalf, but don't don't uh, put your mouth in where it doesn't belong. Only correct them and confront them if you first have a loving uh, friendship with them and you can speak to that person's life with uh, gentility and love. A lot of people have been turned away from the church because of sharp-tongued Christians that think they have the right to be judge and jury about everyone. Listen, you don't have the right to be judge and jury about everyone. You have your faults too. And if we were to take a look behind the curtain and see you, people can judge you as well. So you're not being helpful and harmful and hopeful towards the person. You're being self-righteous. And, and the Lord says self-righteousness is the enemy of, a, of salvation. I'll say that again. Self-righteousness is the enemy of salvation. Not for the person to get saved, not because God won't save the person, but I'm saying uh, your self-righteousness and your opinion may chase the person away from wanting to get saved. That's what I mean by that. Not that God couldn't save them because uh, you gave them an opinion or you told them the what for or you told them what they should do. And it's sad because our self our self righteous comments or our religious comments have chased so many have chased so many of God's children out of the church and and it's so sad and it grieves God's heart. And if you're one of the people that's been chased out of the church by people's comments, uh, I'm sorry. And the Lord is not like that. That was people. And he wants you back. He misses you. He doesn't judge you. He says, come as you are and he'll change you. It's a rough road being a Christian, but it's all worth it. It's just so rewarding. Although it's rough, it's rewarding as well. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for um, being here with me and uh, just listening to me. Father, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for the lives that you, that you will change through this sermon, and I pray that distress signals will be coming forth, and that people will get the help that they need. Um, guide them and lead them to the help that they need. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, I will see you later. Bye. He just called.
Just to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, fall. All you've got to do is call. And I'll be there. Yes, I will. You've got a friend. Ain't it good to know you got a and your father says you got a friend. You are not alone, you got a friend. Keep smiling, keep shining. No, you can always count on me, for sure, that's what friends are for, in good times and bad times, I'll be on your side forevermore, that's what friends are for.